Welcome to a well-dressed episode of Monday Movie Pickup. All right, again, I'm just going to go through some other Disney Movie Club exclusives that I purchased. This is Apple Dumpling Gang, and uh, like last time, I'm not really going to go through much with the cases and the inside disc art because uh, they are just these normal blue discs on the inside. Uh, but yeah, and also these ones don't come with any special features. We kind of talked about this last time with the Disney Movie Club exclusives. Uh, most of them did not come with special features, not much special to them. Uh, but I'm going to go through them nevertheless just because uh, this is the end of Disney Movie Club. It'll be uh, the last orders can be done in May. And uh, I, I did one batch of these. I, I thought I would maybe be done for another month. But then uh, I did order this second batch pretty quickly because they started to go out of print. Uh, that's still happening. And from checking, it doesn't look like anything's going back in stock anyway. Uh, by the way, the computer wore uh, the computer wore tennis shoes. I, I should be saying the title of these uh, movies as I go through them. Uh, this is the other Kurt Russell Disney movie. This is The Strongest Man in the World. Uh, but yeah, it seems like uh, they're not going to restock. I know there's been reports that some of these movies have been showing up at Walmart, and I've seen them, but not these exclusives. I've seen the exclusive um, covers that were done for Snow White, Peter Pan, uh, other movies like that, but I haven't actually seen any Disney movie exclusives. Uh, not these yellow labeled ones anyway, which is concerning because these are the ones that you pretty much couldn't get anywhere except Disney Movie Club. These are the ones that, uh, but this is the parent trap by the way, this is the original movie from the 70s. Uh, but and I haven't seen this one actually in a long time. I know I watched it at one point when I was a kid. But anyway, uh, it's more concerning that you can't find the yellow labeled ones because these are the ones that you can only get on Disney Movie Club, and if they were on eBay, they go for very high prices, unnecessarily. And uh, now, they might be more necessary, because if it's true that they're going out of stock on the website, that might mean that's it. You might not see these again. There's that Mill Creek deal. I know they recently did a deal, I believe, uh, with Sony as well, uh, to start releasing some Disney titles. But that doesn't necessarily mean we're going to see more obscure titles hit Blu-ray, and it doesn't even mean that these are going to hit Blu-ray again. Um, it'd be cool if they did. It'd be even cooler if they came with special features. It'd be kind of annoying that we just bought all these from Disney Movie Club and they were to like re-release them with special features, but I highly doubt that's going to happen. Uh, maybe some legacy special features that came with the DVDs, but a lot of the times th these movies didn't even come with special features on the DVD. This is Freaky Friday. This is the original, and I, this is another one that I believe I've seen it. I believe this one actually had a sequel, and I know for a fact The Parent Trap had a second movie, a third movie, and a fourth movie. I believe they were all TV movies, so... Um, very popular in their time, even before the remakes came about. We have The Son of Flubber. So I was not able to get The Absent-Minded Professor. That one is out of print. It doesn't look like I'll get a chance to buy it. And uh, the Robin Williams movie, Flubber, which was promoted to be going to Blu-ray many years ago in one of those uh, inside pamphlets with the Blu-rays, um, that never happened. They never released the Robin Williams Flubber on Blu-ray. So uh, pretty strange, given that that's probably the more popular of the Flubber movies, but in any case, uh, here's D3, The Mighty Ducks, the third Mighty Ducks movie. Some would say three too many, but anyway, I didn't get D2 because it was already out of print, and like I said, I wasn't really planning on getting the second batch anyway. I didn't really have a goal to get every single yellow labeled, gold label, whatever you want to call them, uh, Disney Movie Club exclusive, but as they started to go out of print, I was like, man, I really should get these. Um, so now I've just missed D2. Maybe I'll have to buy it on eBay at some point, but unfortunately that means someone's going to charge a lot for it. But who knows, maybe we'll start to see some of these exclusives actually show up at a Walmart, or maybe they'll be re-released through Mill Creek, Sony, we'll see. Uh, here's Rocket Man. Here's one I've never seen before. I have no idea what to expect with this one, but anyway. Um, Rocket Man on Blu-ray. Then we have Honey, I Blew Up the Kid. Uh, they don't have the sequel available on Blu-ray, um, so I doubt that one will ever hit Blu-ray. Uh, Honey, We Shrunk Ourselves, which I believe was just direct-to-video anyway. Um, but yeah, I have seen the first one a few times. This one I've never seen, but that was a great title. Honey, I Blew Up the Kid. It's a great title. It was pretty awesome that they did that back in the day. <laughs> Uh, the Three Musketeers, I've never seen this uh, version of The Three Musketeers. I'm a big fan of uh, Man in the Iron Mask, but I've not seen like the legit Three Musketeers story done 
uh, in live action. I've seen that uh, Three Mouseketeers movie. Uh, I believe that's what they called it, right? The Mouse... Was it Mouseketeer? It must have been called that. Donald, Mickey, Goofy. Man, I can't remember if that was called... Because now I'm thinking of the Mouseketeers from, like, the television program, but I'm pretty sure it was called the Three Mouseketeers. It might have been just the Three Musketeers, but... Yeah, yeah, it was just the Three Musketeers. I'm sure that was because they couldn't really say Mouseketeers, because there was already a Mouseketeers, and can't can't do both that would be pretty confusing in the Disney organization <laughs> here you have the kid with uh, Bruce Willis and uh, I remember seeing this movie I, I don't know if I saw it in theaters or just a DVD but I do somewhat remember this movie I remember liking it as a kid I just have not I've not seen it since I was a child so uh, that was one of those movies I remember they were promoting it at Blockbuster the time it was coming out on DVD so that's the kind of memory I have of that film and then we do have some Warner Archive titles. This is great. This is the return of the four for $49 sale, which they did for the 15th anniversary. Uh, we have Gaslight here, which uh, most people probably know this movie nowadays due to uh, the term Gaslight being thrown around a lot. And uh, it comes from this movie. This is, I believe, what it was based on. I don't think the term really existed in the way that it's used nowadays until this movie came out. So. Um, I'm excited to finally give this a watch because for some reason I've just never seen the movie actually. Then we have Abe Lincoln in Illinois. This is just another Lincoln movie. Um, I've had a fascination with Abraham Lincoln as of recently. Um, I'm actually playing a D&D &D character at the moment who just is Abraham Lincoln. So maybe that's why. Uh, I've been watching that Manhunt television show as well about uh, the hunt for John Wilkes Booth. And uh, it's been okay so far. Maybe it's a bit too long. I don't know if it needs to be as many episodes as it is already because it already feels like it's dragging things on a bit. But um, overall, it is kind of nice to watch because I, didn't, I wasn't aware of just how... Um, much of a struggle it was to find John Wilkes Booth after the murder. I, 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 I always thought in my head it was just like a few days, if that even. And I mean, I remember going to the theater where uh, Abraham Lincoln was assassinated when I was a kid, and I remember the whole story was told very well uh, by this historian there. And I got excited because National Treasure 2 came out around that same time, and I remember seeing it in theaters after being to the theater, and that movie pretty much replicated exactly the way that that historian described it. And I've never seen it done the exact same way that that historian described it, except in the National Treasure 2 movie. So I, I almost wonder, like, did they talk to that historian at that theater when they were making the movie? Because he was knowledgeable. And that was the only, I mean, like I said, I, I've read up on it since, and that guy had it the most accurate. And National Treasure 2 seems to have the incidents played out correctly. You know, there's that conspiracy going on in the background, but that has nothing to do with it. Uh, but even Manhunt doesn't play the scenes exactly the way that that guy described it when we went to the theater. So, um, yeah, I remember everything that that guy told us about how the assassination went down. I just don't remember how many days it took for John Wilkes Booth to actually be caught. All right, moving on. We have Dr. X, which is uh, a pre-code horror film, one that I've been interested in watching uh, for quite a while. There's a quite a few uh, special features on here, uh, including a black and white version of the movie, which I think is great. So you get two versions of the movie out of this Blu-ray disc. Moving on to Passage to Marcel, and this is the uh, movie that kind of was a follow-up to Casablanca. A lot of the same people involved. It's not a sequel, but... Humphrey Bogart, you got the same director, just a lot of the same people were involved in this movie and Casablanca. So people consider it a spiritual successor to Casablanca, and that's primarily the reason why I wanted to buy it. I just, you know, I saw Casablanca in a theater pretty recently, so wanted to see the follow-up finally. The so-called follow-up, anyway. Here is another Marx Brothers movie that's finally made it to Blu-ray, A Day at the Races. Um, I have a couple of the other Marx Brothers movies. Uh, a Night at the Opera is another one that's owned by Warner. There's a couple other Warner-owned titles that need to hit Blu-ray. I believe the Universal titles have all hit Blu-ray, at least. I'm sure as I say that, like, when I say, oh, the popular stuff's released, I'm sure people are like, well, no, 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 they they don't have this one yet. It's probably a Warner-owned title, and hopefully that means that they're working on it, because this is a brand new release. Moving on to the giant behemoth, I've had large monsters on the mind with Godzilla, you know, that new Godzilla X-Kong movie, but I guess the X is silent. The new Empire. Um, I've been watching some other Godzilla movies, King Kong movies, and then I've also been searching for some of these other more obscure 
monster movies. Giant Behemoth was uh, a film that was released by Warner Brothers, and you know, I was actually thinking uh, while watching Godzilla X Kong, or Godzilla Kong, I don't know what you want me to call it, the new empire. Um, there's a new monster in the movie who I was wondering, could it possibly be 20,000, the, the beast from 20,000 Fathoms, or could it be the giant behemoth? Because both movies are owned by uh, Warner Brothers, and both monsters look sort of similar to the monster that was in the movie. I mean, at least with uh, the beast from 20,000 Fathoms, for sure, it's on all fours, and uh, it's got a different ability in the Godzilla X Kong movie. They never refer to it as the beast from 20,000 fathoms but just based on the design of the trailer I was almost wondering like huh why are they gonna start opening the door to not just the Toho monsters but some of the other American monsters who could maybe mash up with this franchise it's called the monsterverse for a reason I think the door is open for so many different monsters to show up anyway I didn't really hardly talk about the giant behemoth at all but um just wanted to give it a watch because my mind's on monsters and last but not least we have uh, both the mystery of the Wax Museum and House of Wax, which is the remake with Vincent Price. As you all know, I'm a big Vincent Price fan. Uh, this is a 3D disc as well, so if, there, if you have a 3D TV, you can watch it in 3D. Uh, even if you don't, you can still watch it on your Blu-ray player, regular TV. Um, unfortunately, what I didn't realize is that uh, this is a later release from Warner Archive, so um, I believe they did this release yeah, they, they did this release maybe the same year as this one, I'm not sure, but the point is, this literally comes with the Mystery of the Wax Museum as a special feature, so I didn't even need to buy Mystery of the Wax Museum again. I, I made a mistake. I shouldn't have done that, like you could just get both movies on one disc, but this disc does have some additional special features, so technically it made sense to buy this in the end. It was a complete accident, like I, I would have been happy with just having House of Wax and realizing that it includes mystery of the wax museum like i didn't need to own it again but then i realized you know what there's some different special features on here i don't know if the commentary for this movie is included on that disc and this has a different documentary on it there's a feature about the restoration process so i'm kind of happy i ended up getting this anyway uh that's what the four for 49 deal is anyway uh i still got to get some best picture movies that have now been re-released on blu-ray through warner brothers uh, for the first time a lot of the older stuff like Broadway Melody, Cimarron, movies like that. Uh, there's four of them that have been released on Blu-ray. Now, there's one more Warner title that needs to hit Blu-ray, Around the World in 80 Days, uh, but you gotta go online and read all about the issues with restoring that movie. But hopefully, that is what Warner Brothers is working on next, because that's pretty much the last of the best picture movies that need to be released on Blu-ray, except for Hamlet, which has not been released on Blu-ray in the States, and then Coda, which I don't know if Apple TV is ever gonna put that on Blu-ray. And also, there's some other Warner art uh, titles I want to get, like The Thin Man. Uh, there's four man, four more Thin Man movies I got to get. Four man, four more man, thin man, I got to get four more. There's four more to get, and I skipped out on those ones this time. I don't know when the next 4 for 49 sale will be, because it's been about two years since their last sale. So, I hope it's not another two years, but if it is, I'll hold off on getting those titles for now, and then see what else Warner Archive releases, because they've been doing some great stuff lately. Especially that Hanna Barbera set. I still have to buy that. But anyway, everyone, thanks for watching and see you next time. Thanks for watching the video and special shout out to Anthony, Anna, Kirsten, Spencer, Lucas, and Robert for the support on Patreon. By joining my Patreon, you can get exclusive videos and blogs, and for only $7, you can request your own movie review. I hope you stick around, cinephile, and have a happy, productive day.